Hi, I'm Ken. Thanks for watching my channel. Um, I got a good response off that big long video I made called uh, How to Make a Cigar Box Guitar. The start to finish thing, uh, I hope you got some hints from it. I got some uh, good comments. Uh, I'm going to try to make a couple more videos in the future now that are shorter, that kind of focus on one aspect of what I do. This one is going to be about the graphics. These graphics that I put on these guitars, uh, I'm going to teach you how I do that along with how I get these matchbooks on the neck and the graphic on the headstock. So that's what this one will be about. I want to talk to you a little bit about my scanner. It's the way I get my graphics onto a flash drive onto the computer where I can manipulate the graphic. Now, this one is an HP Office Pro 8610, 8610. It prints, it faxes, it scans, it copies, and it puts stuff on the web if you want it. Reasonably priced. But anyway, I'm just going to take this, even matchbooks. I open them up. I hit scan to hit scan I'm gonna need a flash drive what I like about this one is the flash drive goes right in here I can just insert the flash drive I can tell the computer hey or the copier uh, do this copy it to this uh, scan it to this print it print it to a memory device it's all there once you've got your graphics scanned onto your uh, drive here you just pop it in your computer and go to work I didn't set up screen capture here I want to do this quickly so if you see anything going on in the background that's what's happening now I do my graphics in Word and there's a reason for that so let's just open up Word okay so I've opened up Word here and the reason I use Word is it gives you the opportunity to insert a text box and that's really important because if you just paste a picture here or a graphic and try to size it uh, it's a nightmare plus word has this um, grid line here and here kind of tell you where you're at so if you know how how big your box is and how tall and wide uh, you can kind of measure this up here let me give you an example I'm gonna go up on the menu line up here and hit insert and then I'm gonna follow over and hit text box it's text box it's gonna give us a couple different options I'm going to pick a simple text box and you can see it inserted it right here now I can move that text box all over the place I can do anything I want with it I can make it bigger or smaller so let's say I want to put a net graphic on I just pop up the graphic I want to use this time it's a Texas flag I go back into my text box and I hit paste and I can make it bigger or smaller I can do whatever I want this way. If you just paste this picture into here and try to size it, move it around, it becomes very cumbersome and the graphics on the computer do not like it. So if we go over here where I already have a text box that's sized to uh, a, a box that I typically use, uh, I'm just going to click inside the text box. I'm going to hit paste and that graphic is going to pop up. It's going to be the exact size I need um, over here. Uh, on this page and I'll zoom this in a little bit so you can see what I've got going on here these are also sized to a, a box I typically use now when I click Save on this file I am going to call it the name of the guitar box I, cigar box I'm making and I'm gonna put initials at the end that tell me what a brand the box is and the cigars that go in it which gives you a size a reference so let's say you're going to make a new cigar box guitar using a box you've typically used but you're going to use a different graphic you simply right click in the file where all your cigar box files are and that right here is here I click uh, CBG and here are all the ones I've made uh, with the names on them so let's say for example I've got this one uh, called dots I right click it copy paste and then I can just simply open that up pull the graphics out of the text box text box stays there and I can paste in my new graphics and it makes it happen very quickly so I use word with text boxes and graphics when it comes to printing these off of the computer 
I uh, set the uh, digital resolution up as high as possible on the printer. Remember, we did high resolution when we scanned this stuff. Now, if I'm going to do a box cover, I am going to load cardstock, thick cardstock, right in here. If I'm going to be doing matchbooks, scanning matchbooks like these, uh, to end up with a page like this, and I'm going to use inkjet decal paper. I want you to notice that this is kind of washed out, but trust me, there's clear inkjet and white inkjet. Now I use the white paper uh, because it gives me a better background on the next. If you use clear, uh, you can kind of see something that's not printed, it's translucent. It shows the neck and it just doesn't pop. So again, if I'm doing matchbooks, I'm going to load white inkjet decal paper into the slot and hit print. Easy money. Now once I've printed up these matchbook copies onto a white backed decal paper, I'm going to take a clear gloss enamel and put a couple of coats on like so. So when it comes to doing a neck, it takes about five matchbooks to do the spaces in between the frets. You'll remember that I took matchbooks, used a scanner to digitize them, printed them off on this inkjet white water slide decal paper. Once that was printed out, I took this gloss enamel clear, sprayed it on top of this about three coats, let it dry thoroughly between coats, and now I'm going to cut these out, do the finish cut on one of these cutters. These are really handy. You can line things up and cut them neatly and get these ready for the neck. Again, it takes about five matchbooks to do a neck, and I theme these guitars for people, so they'll find them interesting, but uh, it's pretty hard to tell that these aren't really matchbook covers. Now what I'll do is I'll take the first matchbook, I'll turn it, make sure I've got it the way I want it, uh, I'll turn it over, make sure this is here, and then right at the edge of the fret right there, I'll make a mark like so. I'm going to put a number one here because this is the first space on the fretboard. Now since I've used this cutter to make a nice clean edge, I'll put it there, put the mark on the line, and simply cut that like so. It's got the number one. When I turn it over, boom, it fits right there. I'll go all the way down the neck, laying the matchbooks out like I like. Remember, some of the matchbooks are going to appear to be upside down, but that's what matchbooks do when you open them up. Go all the way down the neck. Once the numbers are done, I know what the numbers are. I start popping these in water. They slip off like a decal. You put them right there. Perfect. Every once in a while, you're going to run across a spot where one matchbook runs out and another one starts halfway through a fret. You just do line them up like that. Simply cut this one like normal and start that one like so. Okay, they're all cut and spaced on the neck. And now we're going to start putting them on. Okay, put in the water for about a minute or so. You'll see it start to slip off the paper. That's where that spray paint, that clear spray paint come in at. You wet this a little bit, have some paper towel ready, and you just slip this off and lay it on there like that. And get the air bubbles out. 
and then just leave it set. You just march, march right down the line like so. Remember it helps to have the numbers on the back just in case you get messed up with your pattern. All right, the neck is match booked. A lot of chickens and a ranchero, figure that out. I'm gonna let these dry and then we're gonna coat them. Okay, I've got two guitars here. One's the Bob Log guitar done. This one I'm building right now. You'll see this one show up in somebody's future here in a couple weeks. But it's for a side-by-side -side comparison. So you can see, for example, these two holes uh, are the volume controls over here. You've got the sound holes here. Uh, you've got a hole for uh, the pickup. So first, of course, you're gonna you're gonna measure the length and width of your box. Um, you're going to through a computer system. You've figured out how to how to do this, and then we take and cut uh, these down with one of these uh, rotary cutters. They're pretty nice for that, and we end up with this. This is going to go on this box right here. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we've got all the holes cut in the box that we need to uh, cut. For example, the sound holes here, uh, the cut for the single coil. I've got some bolts here that hold the top of the box to the neck. And uh, my bridge holes, uh, my potentiometer holes. We want to make sure that those are all done sanded and finished so i'm going to lift this off and we'll be ready to put our graphic on the top of the box so what is the secret you've been dying to know that's right mod podge remember this stuff when you're a kid you used to put it on puzzles to keep jigsaw puzzles together you would take postcards from your visits to around the world and put them on stuff yeah good stuff now i'm going to put this matte finish mod podge on this top of the box so i'm just taking a sponge brush and putting it all over the top of the box doesn't need to be thick this is going to be the layer that attaches our graphic to the top of the box. We want to make sure we don't have any lumps, but it gets everywhere evenly like so. Now if there's any little bits or there's stuff down in your corners or something that's globby, you want to get that off of there, but now you just take this and set it carefully on the box like so notice i didn't cut anything out it's not time to cut anything out yet just put it on the box like so and let it dry just make sure that you thoroughly let it dry now we're, while we're waiting for the graphic to dry on the top of the box we are going to go to work on the net graphic, which is going to be a Texas flag. Now, since this is going to be up on the top of the neck, I can put this like so, line it up, make sure I got distance to down here. And then I'm just going to take a pencil and trace this out like so and cut it out. Yeah, and I'm just going to take a scissors and cut around my line okay same thing now we're going to use the matte mod podge we're going to cover the top of the headstock and put that in place we're going to do all the trim work later so don't worry if the edges are sticking out just a tad
and then we'll just let this dry now we use a matte finish Mod Podge to put the graphic on the top of the box that is dry now we're going to switch to a gloss Mod Podge we'll shake that up and now we're going to paint this stuff right over the top everywhere there we got the one coat on the top we don't want to put too much on here or too thick because it'll start to bubble so you got to let it dry thoroughly then once that's done before we put any more coats on this will be strong enough for us to come in with a razor knife and cut out all of our openings without marring how they look on the front same with the headstock mod podge gloss one coat right on top after the initial we coat we put on to make the graphics stick to the headstock one coat over the top even once that dries up it'll solidify and then we can go and cut the fine detail in with a razor knife we'll also be able to do our holes for the tuners up here and have them come out cleanly now that that first coat of the glossy mod podge is dry on the top we're going to go on the back with a razor knife and just make a couple of slits and then cut these out real clean we'll do that with everything there we got that top section cut out it drops in there where the neck is we got some more holes to cut out but you can kind of see what the theme of this is starting to look like so i've um, got everything done on the box put the front graphic on made all the cutouts there's my uh, mounts for the bridge two volume potentiometers the holes for where the neck's going to be bolted down uh, my holes for the sink drain sound holes the next section's cut out got my signature greaser uh, guitar pin strap another pin for a strap uh, this is going to have two uh, pickups one for each and of course the cutout for the neck on the back so i've also uh, done the corner holes uh, top and bottom the holes to put the corners on so now since that's all done oh and i've also put uh, the bolt holes that go through to the sink drain sound holes and this is what closes the guitar so i've drilled everything i need to drill in the box so now i'll sand this off and put the graphic on and i've cut the back graphic the label with uh, this device here these are really handy they give you a nice clean cut so uh, we're going to take this and put it on the back of the box now same as before the coat of mod podge that holds the graphic to the box itself is going to be matte finish there we go base coat of mod podge to fix this to the bottom of the box is right there we're gonna let that dry now thoroughly okay so now that this is dry we've got this graphic attached to the box we're gonna switch to our gloss Mod Podge and we're gonna coat this with a couple of light coats and we're gonna let it dry thoroughly in between if you don't uh, let it dry thoroughly in between what ends up happening is it saturates through and then you start getting air bubbles and you really don't want that they they don't look good on the finish so we're just going to put a coat of this on and wait a little bit and then uh, let it dry thoroughly and put another coat on we're going to do that about four times now i want to remember before i put uh, the other coats on i want to take and make sure that i find the hole for my through bolt that's going to go to hold 
the drain on and keep the box closed. I want to make sure those are worked over before I put more coats on. Alright, there we go. Looking pretty good. We're going to put a little bit of uh, gloss enamel on this and start putting the guitar together. I appreciate you watching my channel and subscribing and let me know what you think about this one.